let's program a part. Let's begin with a mill circle block. Here we see an uh, image of a mill circle data block. We know it's the first block in the program because it's labeled block 1. Next we come to the fields for the X and Y center. The machine is asking for the location of the center point of the circle in which we want to program. We simply put in the X and Y location as it applies to part 0 of the circle that we're wanting to program. The next field is radius. It wants to know what is the radius of the circle we're cutting. On the print that we're getting ready to program from, this value is given to us in a diameter value. This would be a good time to be able to input this value in as a math function using the calculator keys on the control panel as we discussed before. Next we come to Z start. This is where the tool is going to wrap it to before beginning to feed into the cut. In this case, we want some value positive but larger than zero. We don't want to wrap it to zero or anything below the surface of the part. So we would have a value a little bit larger than zero. The next field, the Z bottom, that's the final depth of the feature we're getting ready to cut. In this case, we're cutting a half inch deep pocket, so we would put a negative 0.5. It's not an incremental distance from the Z start. Is it a true absolute position below the surface or Z zero of the part? So it would be a negative value and exactly what it is written on the print. Now we come to the three tabs in the center of the screen. We have the roughing tab for roughing tools, the finishing tab, which is where we would enter information for a finishing tool, and SFQ or surface finish quality. Under the roughing tab, we enter the tool number that we're going to use. If we know the number, we simply enter it and hit enter. If we don't know the tool number, we highlight the field and we would select one of the buttons, the soft keys on the on the side of the screen that would say select tool from list. That would give us the ability to search out throughout all the tools that are available, select the one that we want, and put that into this field. Next we have milling type. At the bottom of the screen you see the images for the different types of milling types that we can select from. First we have on. That is the center line of the tool following the programmed path. No cutter compensation will be applied. The next two, inside and outside, would allow the tool to plunge off of the part. It would blend on, complete the circle, and blend off when finished. There are times when the blending moves cannot be tolerated. In, in the instance of an O-ring groove, for example. In those cases, we would use inside or outside tangent. The tool will plunge directly on the circle, cut the circle, and then feed off in Z. There would be no blending. The last option we have there is for pocket boundary. That's what we want to select in this case. We want all of the material to be removed inside of that two inch diameter circle. We would select pocket boundary. When we do, we will get the ability for a pocket type, which means starting in the center and pocketing towards the outside of the circle, or the other option would be starting at the outside spiraling inward towards the center. In this case, we want to start at the center. We want to pocket outward. Next, we have pocket overlap. That is the amount of, or percentage of the tool that we want to step over into the cut each time. Put a value there. There is a default value of 50% of the tool in the program parameters. We can change that in here if we'd like, or we could change the default value, which we will discuss later. Next, we have the mill feed and speed. Those came in with the tool. If we took the time to set those up in the tool, we called that tool in the program, this information is set for us. If we didn't take the time to do so, or if we don't like the values that have been put in these fields, we can simply change them now. That brings us to peck depth. We're going a half inch deep in some type of material. If we don't want to cut that full half inch depth all in one cut, we want to do that in pecks or in, in peck levels, we would put the value of each one of those pecks here. In this case, we're going to do them in levels of 100 thousandths per peck. And the last field there is plunge feed. There are two types of plunging that we can set in the Herco control. We can either plunge straight down in Z between the pecks, or we can helical plunge, meaning we helix at some percent, some percentage of the diameter of the tool as an arc, and we helix down to each individual peck level. I can obviously helix much faster than I can plunge straight, therefore the control will never set this field 
for us in milling, we will have to, to enter a value in in inches per minute or millimeters per minute depending on what our, our uh, control setting is. We have now successfully programmed a circle and if I hit the draw button I should see something on the screen that resembles what I have here on, on this slide. However, that was a roughing tool only. If I don't use a finishing tool, the roughing tool will cut the feature to final size. However, if I want to use a finish tool, I would select simply select the finishing tab enter in the necessary information for that tool, speeds and feeds, tool number, and so forth. And the roughing tool would then leave an amount of material for the finishing tool to remove. That amount of material is also set under the program parameters, and we will discuss that later. Now here we see an example of the part we're going to program. The name on this print is Intro 1. A couple things I'd like to point out. The upper right-hand corner of all the prints we will use in class, there is a tool list. Sometimes those tool diameters are arbitrarily picked, but sometimes they are specific to show something on the part that we will address with a feature of the control. So please try to use the tool lists that are asked for. In the bottom right hand corner of the title block you see the intro one or the name of each particular print. So we can use that when we save our program. We can save this program as intro one Therefore, we would have a program that we can associate with a print later on as an example. Every time we have a print to program from, you will also see a menu on bulleted points on the side of the screen. It, it explains how to create a new program and what keystrokes are necessary, how to go about what keystrokes are necessary to get to the stock geometry, and you would then enter in the stock size as it shows on the print. It tells you how to set up a, a a new tool, and then the speeds and feeds that we will use for these tools for this particular print. So please take this opportunity to try to program this mill circle on your own, and there is a video that you can go to that is a step-by-step -step process of, of uh, me programming this for you and explaining it as I go.